I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick little rendition here of uh, where we're headed, in my opinion, in the ag business part of this. Um, I was asked to speak at a couple of different locations through, the, through this last year about ag business. And I know everyone in here, and it's pretty, pretty neat to see a lot of farmers now own businesses. We're getting into uh, more money. We're able to diversify, whether it's in insurance, seed, fertilizer, things of that nature. Uh, we're into all type of agricultural businesses. I want to let everyone know, this is going to be quick, I had the opportunity when I moved back to, from Chicago, I met a gentleman, uh, became a good friend of our family, his name is Dave Crumholtz. I don't know if uh, any of you know Dave or not. I became friends with Dave, we started playing a lot of golf together. Lo and behold, about, I don't know, it was several weeks into the uh, relationship, Dave breaks the news to me that he was the former CEO of Payless Cashways. I don't know if any of you remember Payless, they were the hardware store that ran through the Midwest. Well, I told my wife, I said, I sent a good deal, I said, I might have to whip Dave's ass. I said, we had a lot of money, we had some money invested in Payless. Dave was the CEO and took it right down the tubes. Well, Dave and I became really great friends. He came to uh, a lot of Jordan's baseball games and, we, and we've developed a good relationship through the years. And Dave taught me a lot about business. And I wanna give you guys an example or, or just let you know where this is headed for everyone in here. So we're not caught off guard. Um, Dave, when he left Payless, he ended up with uh, Bob Nardelli, ended up with Nardelli and Jack Welch. Nardelli ends up leaving, goes to Home Depot, becomes the CEO. Dave becomes one of his main right-hand man. Nardelli parachutes out of Home Depot, as we all know, with millions. Dave leaves, becomes the CEO of American Identity, and starts his own consulting business, consulting group. He brought me in, taught me a ton, and, and showed me a lot of things. So, uh, you know, Emily laid out her stance a little bit, but I want to tell you one thing. These people right here that you see on the screen, um, as far as your top three, right here, Carlos Slim, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Five years ago, these people didn't know who I was or could care less. They probably still don't to some degree. But all of their um, services, or I should say their investment groups, subscribe to our service. Let me explain this to you. These people are investing in agriculture for one reason. They see it to be incredibly profitable insanely profitable. They're all making a move into this arena. So you can be as bearish or as bullish as you want to be, but there is huge money to be made in agriculture, and they all see it. And the reason they all see it is simple. Um, here we go with this, Tim. Get me set back up again. As you can see, I'm not the most technologically savvy on these things. You got me? They get it all fancy where I got these words that phase in and out, and I mean, there we go. Money flow and private equity pouring into agriculture. I just spoke recently on this subject. I think everyone in the room has a giant bullseye on their back for one reason. There's fragmentation in this industry, and where there's fragmentation, there's opportunity. And there's high gross profits right now. We all know this, we're seeing this. You got high gross across the board, whether you're simply a uh, producer uh, with, you know, with acreage, or you're running a business, whether it's a grain elevator, ethanol plant, things of that nature. These folks right here at the top understand how the game is played and they understand where the money is to be made. That is why there's the biggest shift taking place in that arena. Who's the biggest shareholder of John Deere? Who knows? Bill Gates, his company. Warren Buffett buying land all over the place. Warren Buffett buying railroad, rail cars, Burlington Northern, right across the board. These people are investing billions into agriculture. Bill Gates in his letter to his investment group just two weeks ago, a month ago, said the world invests $3 billion into tech, uh, technology that can improve crops. He himself invested over $2 billion in 2010, 2011, and he's pledging to, to invest $2 billion from here on out. Trust me, they're going to pour money into this game. And what does this mean? I want to tell you exactly what it means because Dave did a great job of, of teaching me. I, I hear a lot of guys, you know, the Harvard MIT guys, they'll explain this and that. And, and, and they've got a great book savvy, but real life learning uh, is what separates, I think, guys from the crowd. Dave ran a big company right into the ground, I always give him crap about it. Um, but he learned from a lot of his mistakes. He hooked up with guys that have made similar mistakes and I think that's how we all learn. He, and he was able to pass this info and I want you guys to take this back whether you have kids who own a business, you own other businesses, or think of it with your farm. There's really, uh, it, it breaks down into four phases, leading to what I call scorched earth. It's similar to what Walmart's done to the retail sector of uh, 
of our goods. You're going to try and you're going to see people come in and try and gain market share. That's why you're seeing so many companies now try and reach out into other avenues and venues and channels. Uh, you're seeing uh, elevator, you're seeing retailers get into multitudes of, of lines. They're all coming at you in different angles. The reason being is simple. They want to try and get their finger on as much of the market as possible. Understand, these folks are trying to grow the front end. You have to make sure you understand this. People ask me all the time, why is there a Lowe's going in right next to Home Depot and there's no one in the parking lot at Home Depot? Because shareholders care about one thing, front end growth. That's different than private companies. That's different than owning your own company. Private equity and shareholders care about one thing and that's front end growth, remember that. That means they want to see how quickly and how much market share they can capture when they release new products and new lines. That's why you have to continually be building new storefronts and getting into new market share. That's what these companies are going to try and do. They're going to try and be getting into more things and more uh, market share. You're going to see bigger players, uh, you know, like I said, they're only going to care about front end growth. And so it's going to become dog eat dog as we move forward and as we progress. If you're a business and you have other businesses or you're an elevator or you're an ethanol plant, you have to immediately secure what is yours. What I mean by that is you have to absolutely 100% know where you are the best. And then in that customer continuum, you have to try and stay there because they are going to try and push you down to the deepest of waters where you cannot survive, where you cannot swim, and, and, and that's going to be how the game is played. Just like Emily said, if they take grains to an extreme and corn would go to 350, sub 350, make sure you have a plan. Make sure you have alternatives. Make sure you can withstand that move. Because these guys, they, they got no problem seeing it go there. They want it, they have no issues. Because they know when it goes there, they're gonna shake the trees and there's gonna be some serious fallout. Let's look at banking, US banks. This is in every business. Dave said, private equity and money flow moves around like piranhas. From one industry to the next, looking for the highest gross profit and the highest fragmentation. I promise agriculture is the number one spot because it is fragmented and it is high gross. So all money and all private equity, in a sense, in some capacity, is looking this direction because they know that's where the opportunity is at. Similar to banking, when you've seen the banking collapse and now we're uh, consolidated down to nothing. I mean, we're consolidating and continuing to consolidate. Uh, one of the main things, I'll try and rush through it a little bit before we can get to lunch because I, I want you guys to really uh, understand this. Ag retail going from you know, 18,000 outlets, now we're down to 5,000. And it's continuing to push. And they are continuing to consolidate and get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and this is going to be the nature of this beast. I would say we're probably somewhere in between phase one and phase two at this current time. They've tried to reach out and get as much market share as they can. They're accumulating more and more. And now we're heading into uh, this consolidation where a lot of people in the ag industry, and if you have relationships with some smaller people, those relationships could be turning over quicker than you think. So make sure you have alternative sources. Make sure you have other... You know, you make sure your bases are covered. And those of you who have the businesses, make sure you're going to secure where you're at. What I mean when I say they're going to push you in that direction, they are going to push you down to heavy user. They are going to push you to like where a Walmart would want to take you. They are going to push you to what I call the right of the continuum. That means lower gross, heavier user. Um, the, let's say the, uh, you know, the ag retailers, they're trying to cater to the 40,000 acre farmer and what's he want? He wants one thing, bigger, faster, cheaper, period. He knows he can go around the agri, he knows he can jump and go direct, he knows he can make those moves. So what's happening is we're seeing our ag retailers get pulled that direction, and we're seeing some of our other people in the industry get pulled that way. Now they're in a low gross environment. They're trying to compete on low gross. That's not an area where they probably can compete. Why? Because the people I showed you in that first screen have deeper pockets. They can take the, take the sinker all the way to the bottom. And I'm not sure a lot of us can swim in that environment. That is their goal. They get you over into that side of this water, and then they try and take you down. So be careful, because everyone's going to push you that way if you have a business in ag. They're all going to try and take you to that side of the spectrum. You need to carve out a niche somewhere in these areas 
A great example is Home Depot versus Payless, just because I know it, it hits hard to home. Dave and Payless, to let everyone know, all they simply tried to do, they, tried, they thought they had a plan. They wanted to have no DCs, no distribution centers. If you remember, all their stores were set up next to what? Railroads. Because they wanted no DCs, so they thought they would go cheaper transportation, unload the lumber right at the lot. And they were going after heavy users. They were going after all the big builders. They wanted to go after the biggest players. They're like, man, we can nail it. Boom. We'll be perfect. Dave said, critical mistake. Critical, critical mistake in business planning. Went after the wrong people, went after the wrong crowd. Home Depot, big box stores, came in and it became about transactions. And all of a sudden it was about location. And it was about high gross. So Home Depot and the bigger box stores are creating more revenue off higher gross products. Dave and Payless Cashways are trying to cater to the builder. The builder's only coming to them for low gross products and trying to compare. Comparison shop them, shopping them across the board, just like you guys know, and just like we see in this industry. Uh, the advent of technology, social networking, all of a sudden now everyone can see what the other one's paying and what they're not paying, and you're gonna move your business around. They made a critical mistake and a critical error. The other problem was they couldn't get the help to service that guy. Some of these people can't get the help to service the 40,000 acre guy. He just, boom, goes right around. This is where this is heading. You're gonna see more and more consolidation, I promise. It's gonna come down the pipe. You folks that are in the ag, there's a ton of money to be made in all sectors here. Be careful swimming down in those heavy, deep waters. Make sure you know where you're at on this front. I like to say the cannibalization. I got the cannibal on here. Your key will be gross profit. What happens is, just like in the cell phone business, or the PC business, once they've grabbed all the market share, they have one thing to do left. Now they try and get, it's cannibalistic. They just start cutting each other's throat and lower and gross, lower and gross, lower and gross. So you might see some advantages with prices coming down, things of that nature. If you're a business owner, you have to understand when that's coming. And when that's coming down the pipe, you have to have some strategies in place. You may even have to have an exit strategy. I hate telling people that. I, we just spoke uh, for some people and I said, for half of you in the room, you might want to have an exit strategy in place because selling a business isn't a bad thing. I mean, especially if you can sell at the high. But you have to know, if, you're, if you feel your business is gonna get swept in that direction and you really can't compete, you have to have some alternatives. So know that cannibalization will come next and that's when you'll see the prices start to come down, like we did with cell phones. Uh, you know, we used to pay these huge cell phone bills and then once they had done grabbing market share, everybody started cutting each other's throat and there we went. Same thing will be happening here in agriculture, just give it a little time and I think we're already seeing it. Um, the other alternative, and what I want to let everyone know is, yeah, you can create a new market. This is what, uh, Steve Jobs, this is what Apple was so good at. I mean, they created a new market. They went beyond better sameness is what I like to call it. Better sameness is just, everyone says listen to your customer, listen to your client. I say that's, uh, that's for the book people. That's, uh, that's, that's the shit they teach in college. I, I don't believe it. I think a customer doesn't know. I didn't know I wanted this cell phone that was gonna give me quotes on it 15 years ago. I didn't know I wanted you know, the computer I had. I didn't even know it existed. So to ask the, your customer, he's just gonna tell you bigger, faster, cheaper. I mean, that's all he knows. So he's gonna go down that line with you. You have to come up with something that's unique and valuable. And I wanna give you guys this one graph. Write it down, take it with you, so when people approach you with what I always used to tell my wife, I said it was felt like it was, and there's some guys in this room to know, it was my money and their idea you know, or, or their plan. And it didn't always work out so well. It ended up being my experience and, and, and then their money. So I, I just want you guys to know as you come into money, people come to you with ideas. Put the idea to this test.